On the vast, barren landscape of Nunavut's Victoria Island, the final days of summer have arrived. And in the village of Cambridge Bay, there's a rush to get ready for a big visitor. There's just a lot of last minute things, and I mean, I'm not freaking out over it or anything, it's just steady. So the, the transportation's gonna come. Vicki Itok has her hand in lots that goes on in Cambridge Bay. Originally from Humboldt, Saskatchewan, her husband is Inuk, and she's lived here for over 20 years. You ever um, tire of this landscape? No. I love it. I absolutely love it. I love the water, I love the fresh air, the quiet. Among the many hats she wears is cruise ship coordinator. That's right, cruise ships. In fact, this cruise ship, the Crystal Serenity, is what they're preparing for. The Serenity is making history by being the first full-size cruise ship to sail the Northwest Passage. Nearly 70,000 tons, 1,600 passengers and crew. Crystal Cruises started talking to people here two years ago about this trip. Would the cruise industry be welcome? I'm in the middle. You're, you're, you're trying to make it happen, but you're not passing judgment on it? Right. That's it exactly. That's it exactly. Because I'm making it happen because the community wants it. If the community says after this big one is here that no thanks, this is more than what we're, we want, I'm going to follow that. I'm going to listen to that. Helping her is Ati Tak, Eva Lokajuk, or Ati for short. You'll see her all over the place on her ATV. Welcome. Thank you. You need help? Welcome. May I take your picture in front of you? Okay. Welcome to Cambridge Bay. The day before the big ship arrived, a much smaller vessel was in town. And she was one of the first locals the visitors met. And then I will walk you around town after Vicky finished talking with you. Makes me proud, like, to show off this town for other countries to know that we live up here. And what they learn from us is a great surprise to some of them. What they learn quickly is that there are a few luxuries here. The homes aren't fancy. They're built to survive the cold. There are two stores, but lots of people still fish for food and prepare it to last over the long winter. Ships from the south arrive once a year bringing supplies and new vehicles people here get used to fending for themselves. Roy Klingenberg is a carver. These are all my carving tools. He prepared for the cruise ship visit by making beautiful art to sell, hoping his work will impress the wealthy people coming to town. I'm happy they're starting to come around now and come to see our community and uh, our local carvers. They can't believe uh, that we could pick up a piece of rock and discard it. The window to visit Cambridge Bay by ship is tight. Just a couple of weeks when the ice finally melts and before the freeze-up starts again. The route that once proved so impassable for early explorers has now been mapped, so the obstacles in the path of the Crystal Serenity are largely known. Still, there are gaps in the charts, and parts of the Northwest Passage are very shallow and hazardous. The Crystal Serenity is 13 decks of luxury. We spent a day on board when it was in Vancouver. What the ship doesn't have is the ability to cut through ice and to handle an emergency all on its own. So the company said it would make the Crystal Serenity self-sufficient, and that's expensive. Crystal may be one of the few cruise companies that can actually afford it, it's high-end luxury. Passengers spent anywhere from $1,000 to $4,000 a day to make this 32-day voyage. For that price, the company chartered its own icebreaker, a British vessel, the Shackleton. It carried a helicopter for sightseeing and for emergencies. Crystal also hired two experienced Canadian ice pilots to watch from the bridge and it installed forward-looking sonar on the ship to spot submerged ice. This is not a place that is safe. It's a very risky uh, region, and uh, to have cruise ships coming there with such large numbers of people on board is a, a recipe for disaster. 
new Canadian Arctic region. Michael Byers lives on Salt Spring Island in BC, and he's an expert in Arctic sovereignty. He was asked by Crystal Cruises to go on the trip to share his knowledge of the North, but he declined. Our search and rescue helicopters are based in Nova Scotia, Newfoundland, and on Vancouver Island in BC, and sometimes take two days to get to the Northwest Passage. And even then, a single search and rescue helicopter can't rescue 1,500 or 2,000 people. As you can see, the Crystal Serenity is in Amundsen Gulf. The Canadian Coast Guard was intensely involved planning for this voyage. Thousands of kilometers away, Jeffrey Hutchinson and his team were watching at the Ice Command Center in Montreal. Environmental response is difficult to do. So we're watching this ship every day, every hour, we're paying attention. Hutchinson disputes the suggestion Canada can't handle trouble in the Arctic. He says there were four icebreakers along the Serenity's route, as well as several depots of environmental cleanup equipment in case something spilled. It's sufficient, he argues, for the moment. But if, um, if we see an increase in traffic in the Arctic, uh, I think the platform will have to evolve with that. The worry, of course, is that not every cruise ship will have as deep pockets as Crystal. Will future cruise ships from other cruise lines, which are, are operating on lower margins, make that same choice, or, or should we require them to do so? Let's talk about the level of interest that you've had. And there will be other big cruise ships, says the vice president of the company. John Stahl says a warming climate now means the Arctic is open for business. I think the interest is overwhelming. I think that any time you can present something that's new, something that people haven't done, when you can take a luxury audience, introduce them to expedition, it's rare. And the more that we can expose them to this part of the world, the more we think we're doing the job that we need to do. There shouldn't be limits. We shouldn't uh, uh, not expose our guests to some of the most remote places in the world. They want to see it. The big day arrives in Cambridge Bay. The ship towers over the landscape. Its draft too deep to squeeze into the Hamlet's small harbor. It has to anchor a few hundred meters offshore near an area the locals call the gravel pit. Passengers are zodiac onto shore. Whereas once this kind of adventure tourism used to be reserved for those with strong endurance and fitness, that's clearly no longer the case. Adventure tourism in the Arctic is now open to all ages. Are uh, you coming together? Yeah, there you go. Excellent. Yeah. How you doing? Okay. Uh, and predictably, there were photo ops with locals and their animal pelts, and the Mounties put on a good show too. <laughs> Among the passengers we met on the beach were a Brazilian couple. Sheila Muschelak is an internet entrepreneur from Sao Paulo, and her husband Mario is a stock trader. Something that I wouldn't imagine, I had no idea of how it, it was going to be this isolated place and being where very few people have already visited. They were well aware of the criticism of the trip. One online news site even called passengers the world's worst people, suggesting because they're wealthy, they're bigger contributors to global warming, and by coming here on a fossil fuel emitting cruise ship, they're making the problem worse. Both disagreed. With more people knowing and being aware to the Arctic, there is going to be more pressure for preserving it, to taking care of it. The only way of taking care of something is knowing about it. So uh, I think at the end of the day, it's going to be very positive. But everything has to be done with certain care, like it shouldn't be allowed to come a bunch of tourists and like Copacabana Beach, you know? <laughs> <laughs> it's different. You have to take care of everything that you you do here. Hi. Wow. <laughs> In town at the community hall, artisans from across the far north did a brisk business. It's beautiful, and it's all hand done. It's not something we're going to find back at San Diego. <laughs> and Roy Klingenberg's beautiful creations got a lot of attention. I've been hearing they're really impressed with my work and everything and all that, and uh, I'm really happy for them to like my work. Klingenberg made about $2,000 that day, 
He told us a good year for him is 30,000, so this was significant. Altogether, community leaders estimate the one-day visit generated over $110,000 in business for Cambridge Bay, a large amount for a place that isn't used to seeing much outside interest at all. One of the few people we found who seemed worried about the implications of all this was Peggy Toliganic. Would you like to see a lot more big cruise ships coming to town? No, 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 no. Once in a while it's good. Like, it'll do something to our environment. Like, son of a gun, there's no ice now, eh? And I always think these big ships are causing this, you know, massive, uh, just everything. It's environmental. Once in a while a big one like this is good. And, um, you know, they should okay all the cruise ships that are coming. They don't just come up and... Oh, we're here. Entertain us. The morning after the ship left Cambridge Bay came the money shot. Just on the other side of Victoria Island, there was ice. And on that ice were polar bears, quickly surrounded by zodiacs from the Crystal Serenity. Priceless publicity for future Arctic cruises, but no doubt utterly bewildering to the polar bears. Good. Did you get to town? Vicki, I talk, and others here will now have a long winter to think about boasting more cruise ships. How are you feeling right now? I'm feeling relieved. I'm feeling uh, good, actually. I'm feeling feeling pretty good. Yeah. Why? Well, to be honest with you, I asked everybody who was helping today would they like to do this again, and they all overwhelmingly yes. Can you see a day where Ati told us she also thinks some good will come out of this trip. I hope when they go home that they pass on this global warming that is dangerous for us. I hope they do pass it on. It's what I want out be, to be known about this global warming. The Crystal Serenity made history by becoming the largest cruise ship to complete the Northwest Passage crossing. In 1906, Norwegian explorer Roald Amundsen took three years to do this. A hundred years later, the Serenity did it in under two weeks. Maybe in its own way, this ultra-luxury cruise ship will help us to refocus our national attention and you know, start working on protecting the Arctic for once. The Arctic remains a remote and expensive place to be a tourist. But after this visit, it now seems perhaps a bit more accessible than before. Chris Brown, CBC News, in Cambridge Bay, Nunavut.